Guys, I am so excited about this week. I have a big old box from AMD with CPUs and GPUs in them, and I've set a bunch of time aside to do testing this week so I can bring you guys up-to-date detailed information on the new products. Actually, one sec, I get a call coming in. Uh, hello, NVIDIA. You have new products, you say? All right, well, screw all this stuff. I think I'll just work on this instead. Excellent. So this isn't the first time this has happened and it definitely won't be the last time, but the impending launch of AMD's seven nanometer products, both Ryzen 3000 series CPUs and the Navi-based Radeon 5000 series GPUs has spawned some competition. We're not expecting much from Intel on the CPU side until later this year, but Nvidia has stepped in with today's launch of the super versions of RTX series graphics cards to give AMD's still unreleased Navi cards a hard time. And hopefully if you're Nvidia's marketing department, steal their thunder. Now I can't say for sure if NVIDIA has been planning this launch for a while, or if they've just had it in their back pocket waiting for the next move from Radeon Technologies Group, but we have known that AMD is launching on July 7th, 7-7, that's on Sunday by the way, for quite some time. So NVIDIA slipping in this launch of the RTX 2060 Super and 2070 Super only five days before is probably just coincidence. There is an RTX 2080 Super on the way too, by the way, we're just not quite sure of the launch date for that yet. But let's try to look past the drama between AMD and NVIDIA and focus on what this GPU launch means for gamers at home when it comes to the graphics cards available to you in the mid to high end range or about $350 to $700. So I've done my best to quickly sum up the changes with this handy chart. You can see the previous lineup and pricing next to the updated lineup and pricing and note that Nvidia is replacing the existing RTX 2070 and RTX 2080 with the new super versions. So the RTX 2060 will still be around and will cost $350. The 2060 super will be $400. The 2070 super will be $500. $500 and the 2080 Super will be $700. So for the 2070 at least, this means that the Founders Edition and third party versions will start at the same price of $500, which I like since that's less confusing than having a Founders Edition that's $600 and normal versions that are $500 and some special versions that are still $600. The point being though that non-Super RTX 2070s and 2080s pretty much suck now and they will be gradually phased out. But hey, maybe that means that you'll see some bargains on them in the near future. But honestly, who would even want a 2070 that's not super. Ew, that's gross. But what's the real difference specs-wise and under the hood apart from pricing? The 2060 Super is still based on the TU-106 GPU but has an increased core count from 1920 up to 2176, also expanded memory bus from 192-bit to 256-bit, and 8 gigs of GDDR6 instead of 6. The memory is still running at 14 gigabits per second, but the expanded bus ups the bandwidth to 448 gigabytes per second. The TDP is also increased from 160 watts to 175 watts, and although the base clock is increased about 100 megahertz, the boost clock that's listed actually went down from 1680 to 1650, but during testing both of the cards, the 2060 non-super and 2060 super ran at more like 1850 to 1900 megahertz, so that really didn't have a huge impact. The 2070 super, meanwhile, has a core GPU upgrade and is now based on the TU-104 instead of the TU-106 like the original 2070. This means that the CUDA core count is bumped up to 2560 from the previous 2304. TDP is also up to 215 watts formerly 175. This also means that NVLink SLI is now supported on the RTX 2070 Super. And even though I don't usually recommend a two-way setup for mid-tier cards, I would rather have that option than not. So that's kind of a nice bonus too. We also have about 150 megahertz increase on the base and boost clocks for the 2070 from reference. There are also additional SM units and texture units and pretty much the same memory configuration with eight gigs of GDDR6 running at the same speed. As for the RTX 2080 Super, Super, NVIDIA is still holding back on detailed info, apart from the price and that it exists, but they do say it will be faster than the Titan XP, that's Big X Little P, and it will be replacing the existing RTX 2080 for $700. And yes, again, that means that the Founders Edition won't have that $100 price premium over third-party cards. And now on to testing, and let me be direct, I ran all of these tests fresh, and if we're being honest, what you'd really wanna see in a comparison benchmark is how these cards compare to the new Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT. But I can't do that until Sunday, and I wasn't given a whole lot of time to run these benchmarks since this information came kinda of late. So today we have an all NVIDIA benchmark party focusing on the performance of the new super cards relative to the existing non-super RTX cards. And come back on Sunday if you'd like to see these numbers updated with performance versus Team Red. The test bed I'm using is 
based on an ASRock C390 Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard and an Intel Core i9-9900K running at 4.8 gigahertz across all cores. It's cooled by the new Noctua NHU-12A tower cooler. The memory is a set of G-Skill Royal RGB at 3600 megahertz CAS latency 16, and we're running Windows 10 version 1903, which is installed on a 512 gig Samsung 970 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD. We are powered by an EVGA Supernova G3 750 watt power supply, and these tests were run on an open test bed, not in a case, just FYI. The last thing to point out is that I do not have a Founders Edition RTX 2070. Nvidia had third party versions sampled back when they were requiring both a $500 and $600 version of the RTX 2070 to be sent to reviewers. After some internal debate, I decided to just go ahead and test with the MSI Gaming Z RTX 2070, which was originally $600, but the 2070s are all gonna be somewhat normalized around the $500 price now. There's still gonna be some more expensive cards for third party manufacturers, but it won't have that $600 price from the Founders Edition. So I'm pretty sure it is okay to classify this as a $500 card going forward. That said, here are your benchmarks. So there you have it guys, it wasn't too surprising to me, but the 2060 Super is faster than the 2060, but slower than the 2070. The 2070 Super is faster than a 2070, and actually comes pretty close to the 2080 in some tests, but still stays in its lane without stepping on Big Brother's toes too much. Of course, I can only imagine what this will mean for the expected performance of the RTX 2080 Super. Let's look at some cumulative numbers to get more specific though. So if you're moving from the RTX 2060 to the 2060 Super, you should expect about 13% better performance at 1080, about 16% better performance at 1440, and about 18% better performance at 4K. If you're moving from an RTX 2070 to the 2070 Super, you should expect about 8.5% better performance at 1080, about 8.6% better performance at 1440, and about 9.2% better performance at 4K. And again, this is comparing a third-party overclocked RTX 2070 to the new Founders Edition RTX 2070 Super. Now, I do still have more data that I have gathered and I do have more to say about these cards but I will be continuing my analysis once I can speak more openly about the Navi cards that AMD still has under embargo so for that reason I'm keeping this video pretty simple and maybe a little bit shorter. What questions can be answered for now though? There are a few. First are the 2060 and 2070 Super significantly faster than their non-Super counterparts? The answer would be yes by about 10 to 15 percent based on my testing. Has Nvidia just succeeded in juicing the performance of their GPU lineup that will be compared to Navi just just days before Navi launches. Yes, that's, that's pretty sneaky of them. Do consumers now have more GPUs to choose from, including several NVIDIA GPUs that offer more performance for either the same amount of money or even less money if you're looking specifically at Founders Edition cards, which you shouldn't be, but you can kind of look at it that way anyway. Yes, as well. And I think that's pretty much the note I'm gonna end this video on. I do have more to come very soon, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you guys in the next one.